let's talk about how to find the area of a parallelogram. So let's start by actually drawing a parallelogram. So a parallelogram is a four-sided polygon, which is a closed figure, and it has two pairs of parallel sides. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the top of my parallelogram. Then I'm going to go ahead and draw a bottom of my parallelogram that looks like this. So here's my first set of parallel sides. Then I'm going to go ahead and close it up by adding these two sides that are also parallel. So I have a parallelogram. So remember to find the area of a parallelogram, what they're asking us to do here is to find the amount of space that is inside of this parallelogram. So we can do this a couple of ways. Since I did this on graph paper, we could actually count the squares or we could just use a mathematical formula. Sometimes, to be quite honest, it's easier to count the squares and sometimes it's easier just to use the formula. So today I'm going to show you how to do both. So I'm going to start off by looking at the formula first. So the formula to find the area of a parallelogram looks like this. We write a capital A, which stands for area, and that is going to be equal to the length of the base times the length of the height. And we've just multiplied those two things together, and that is going to give us the area for this parallelogram. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find out what is the length of the base. So the base, I'm going to choose the base to be right here. And to find the length of it, I just need to count the number of squares or the number of lines of how long it is. So I'm going to start over here on the left and I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the length of my base is 8. So I can go ahead and put in the number 8. I'm going to go ahead and bring down this area and this equals as well. Now I need to multiply that 8 to the height of my parallelogram. Now the deal with heights are that heights must always be perpendicular to a base. And so the symbol for perpendicular I just made right here. And what that does is when you have two lines that are perpendicular to each other, it gives you this nice right angle. And so when you look at this, this side here would be a base and this right here would be a height. So looking at my parallelogram the way it is right now, I don't see that any side is perpendicular to another side. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to draw a height line. So how I do that is I have two options actually. I can draw it inside the figure, so I'm going to do that first. So I'm going to start here at this corner right here, and I'm just going to draw a dotted line down. And as you can see, that makes a right angle. Or I can also do it outside of the figure. So sometimes it's easier to do it inside and sometimes it's easier to do it outside. So let me show you what it looks like when I draw it outside. So on the outside, I could start here and I could just draw a dotted line to here. And then I would draw a dotted line to here. And I see that I now have a right angle. Now remember, the dotted or the dashed lines means that that is not part of the shape. That's why you don't draw a solid line. You just draw a dashed line because it just kind of helps you find the information that you need to fill in the formula. So from here, all I need to do is count how long or how tall my height is. So I start here, one, two, and it's the same if I go to the outside, one, two. So my height is going to be two. And then all I need to do is multiply those two numbers together and 8 times 2 gives me 16. And my label will be centimeters squared. And whenever you are multiplying a two-dimensional figure like a parallelogram, your label will always be the number of units squared. So that is one way to find the area. The other way to find the area is actually just to count the squares. So let me get rid of a little bit of information in here to make it a little bit easier to see. So I'll get rid of that. Oops, I got rid of my line there, so I need to put that back in there. All right, now I said to you the other way that you could do this is to actually count the squares. So let's go ahead and count the squares. And I think I'll go ahead and count by doing one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And if you can see here, do you see that this is half of the square and so is this one? And I have the same on the other side. So I'll go ahead and fill those in. So this would be 15 and then these two would be 16. So do you see how I have the same answer again of 16 squares to fill up the inside of this parallelogram?